Hi, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. Today's guest, we have Kelly Ingram, and she's with Building Bridges Solutions. Uh, normally, I would have my co-host, uh, Wendy Perry. However, she, she took the opportunity to spend some time with her husband on vacation. Uh, this is a very special uh, show. It's actually the first show where we are partnered with the Future of Our Children's Video Network. So we are so grateful to be part of this family, this new family that we've joined of other shows that are dealing with high conflict family situations and, uh, and the un unified goal of bringing uh, harmony to families. So welcome, Kelly. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Danica. I'm glad to be on, especially the first show connected to the Children's Network. Who would have thought? That's amazing. Congratulations on Custody Matters. Uh, I, it is so exciting. It's, a, it's quite an honor to be recognized as somebody, as, a, as an organization that's really making a difference for, for families. And uh, I'm starting, we're, oh my gosh, the it, everything is exploding as far as the number of views and, and things like that. It's, it's like a dream come true in regards to helping families. Super excited. But I oh, yeah. brought you on. Um, not only are you one of my closest friends and you don't look too far from me, I, um, I also, uh, one of the reasons that we connect so much is because we're both on the same path of, of helping families going through high conflict situations. And um, not too long ago, you've actually been working on, on a, a curriculum. So you are officially a published author in the realm of family advocacy curriculum. And it's called Building Bridges. It's a high conflict uh, co-parenting intervention, which is huge, huge that we need that in the courts today because the judges are uh, at a loss of what to do when they're dealing with these high conflict families that just don't seem to to get better. So Kelly, tell us a little bit about your program. Oh, thank you. You're absolutely right, Danica. The, um, the high conflict co-parenting that we are witnessing today, it's only been kind of on the rise in my opinion. And for whatever reason, our courts lack the ability to really do something meaningful as far as intervening in those situations. So what the goal was when I first came up with this idea a little, it was just about a year ago and um, you had, you were out of town and you had traveled back from a conference in DC and it was uh, on that Sunday, it was the same Sunday and I remember saying we need a co-parenting boot camp of sorts because the only thing that judges right now have available to them for help in these situations is the, first of all, the mandatory co-parenting class, which is great and I'm glad that we do that, but it's a four hour class that touches on the basics because that's all you can really cover in four hours. You know, co-parenting is a huge thing. and. Um, the most stressful part of any split really but the next step that they had if that didn't work was a full-on psychological evaluation at the rate of you know between four and six thousand dollars per person in the family so this 12-hour class is meant to be something that takes the four-hour class it breaks it down into its minute parts and begins to really expand on the 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 big pressure points in the conflict itself if that makes sense absolutely absolutely you know you're right i mean it's hard to make real change when you only have them for four hours and and the thing is is that with the co-parenting the family stabilization course it's really it's it's a blanket kind of course that touches families who are in high conflict or families that have very low conflict it just giving them the basic tools, uh, kind of navigation tools, but it really does not make a difference what, when you're dealing with uh, families that are just stuck in resistance and, and struggle for these, and the children are, are suffering because of that. Yeah, um, you know, 
dysfunctional relationships are the reason why there are splits. But we always try to carry a, that same dysfunction within the dynamic of the relationship when we were intimate partners with this person into our co-parenting realm. And those, the, the thing about it is we've got to start managing the transition better rather than the people that are thinking the all or nothing of, yeah, I'm losing my family, I'm losing everything that matters to me. Well, no, your family is literally still right there, but let's manage this transition because now you're not gonna be intimate partners with that person, but guess what? You still have them until death do you part because you had children with them. So for better or worse, we've gotta make this thing work for the, you know, the benefit and the rights and that your child and children have to have a relationship with each of you. Yeah. So it's all about managing the transition and the transitions are always the hardest. If you think about any transition in your life, every time you graduated from school and you were put out into the world, whoa, huge transition. Well, you've outgrown this relationship now and it needs to transition to one that can be workable for everyone. So I have a question. Okay. So first of all, what was your, I wanted to know a little bit about your program, what it would look like for, for parents attending, participating. Also, I wanted to find out, well, what, what's the advantage for the courts to be able to have this as an offering to, to mandate for these parents? Okay. Um, good question. <sighs> The, what my program looks like is a total of 12 hours and it's four sessions of three hours a piece. So the first section that we, we really emphasize that first three hours, we talk about your kids. We talk about their perspective of what's been happening and we make it personal to what's going on with you and your dynamic. So because the classes are small, they're very small, sometimes it's one-on-one -on -one even. So it's um, really easy to pinpoint the areas that are, that are still hooking uh, parents into the cycle of dysfunction once we get to the bottom of what's going on with their children and what their perception is. The second one talks about the second section that we would go into after that. So you've commit, you, you've already done the three hour first section. Next, the next week you get another three hours and that one talks about where your power actually lies in this situation. What can you control? What can't you control? And you might be surprised how much you can control if you focus on one response at a time rather than living out the tragedy in your mind constantly over and over and over and bringing up the pain and the hurt. Once we govern ourselves by specific rules, we can navigate through that part of the pain and the fear and the suffering of the split pretty easily. It just, so much of it's going on inside of their heads and in their hearts. It's the most important people in the world to them are their children. So we take this, and we manage it down to something that they can actually begin thinking logically about. And then the, uh, the third section is rules to govern yourself by while you're going through this. Let's simplify this process. Some hard and fast rules will make things easier every time. And then we look at specific case studies where when that rule was applied, it made all the difference in the world. And so uh, breakthroughs get made all the time in that section. And then our fourth, we talk about setting healthy boundaries going forward so that your co-parenting relationship can begin to grow towards something that you can be proud of rather than something that you look at as dreadful. That is awesome. Um, why is it important for the courts to even do this? It's, it's a huge financial burden lifted off the family for one because if you're having to fork out five, six, seven thousand dollars for a full on psych eval, hey, this is far, far less expensive. You can take the entire 12 hours for 600 bucks. That's an amazing price, and you're getting decades and decades of personal and professional experience and one on one help. So it's, um, I think it's a win 
for co-parenting as a whole because once we can take these high conflict cases and manage them down to something that's workable, our kids are the winners. Our Absolutely. Are the you know, that's the thing that people don't realize is the impact of how uh, if you don't take care of this now, you'll take care of it later. It'll be a burden on society later. You know, it's, it's like the high school dropout rate is, is directly correlated with how many uh, prison beds are we're going to be needed in 20 years it's the same kind of thing is it's not just money out of the pockets of the parents it's the it's the future of the children and what's going to happen absolutely you are correct and when you think about it like that and you begin getting a more holistic and bigger view of this problem you know, right now I'm doing some ancillary work with some families that have experienced extreme tragedy because of co-parenting disasters. And um, just, I would, I would think if we could manage this transition from intimate partnership to co-parents in a, in a healthier way, I, I truly believe that it would directly correlate to lower um, homicide and homicide suicide rates because I've been the research that I've done Danica is staggering how how many um, deaths actually occur by some result of dysfunction in a co-parenting relationship you yeah. know I, the during the month of April where uh, is, which is Parental Alienation Awareness Month, mm -hmm. that just in that month, is, there was, a, there was a, a murder like every week happening that hit national news and it was just devastating. And it was very obviously, and it was, the thing is, there was one that was at a, it was at a police station, a child exchange, and yeah. one parent killed the other parent and, and didn't, didn't, um, there was no deterrent that the police station was like right there. Uh, but it was just devastating to think that it's such an emotionally triggering thing. The thought of losing um, the opportunity to, to parent your own child that when you're in emotion, you're not even thinking about uh, the consequences. No, you're not. And that's the problem. Here's Right now, even now, I'm working with a mom that just lost her 21-year-old son because he was returning a child uh, back to the child's mother. And that would just happen here in March. There's a few other uh, murder suicides that um, have happened just this year. And if you think about, remember, uh, November 1st, October 31st, November 1st of uh, 2018, there was four separate incidents that had to do with co-parenting just here in Polk County, all of which had at least one or both parents killed. So this is literally now a life and death situation. And I also think that it's, it's good to note that some of the, um, you can go through this huge 12 hour program and still feel a lot of angst and a lot of anger and I think some of the highest incidences of violence and really high conflict occur after the alienation part has kind of had to stop. Like one parent is forced to go ahead and let the children uh, have time with the other parent. And then the next thing you know, just when they get some type of rectification from the courts, a violent episode happens. So it's almost like four steps forward and one step back. So I think maybe the way to detour that is to educate people beforehand. Like, listen, you in all likelihood are going to need to figure out how to share custody with your co-parent. And that's going to be really hard when it first starts back up and it's going to be scary. So you need to be prepared for those feelings. And then we can begin working with people before that even the first meeting even takes place because you know what, there's a lot of hard feelings. Like you said, if you want to see people act out very badly and irrationally, 
you talk about interfering with the relationship with your own children. It, you know, it's really the thing in the articles that kept coming up was they kept they kept focusing on domestic violence. They they were focusing on the one parent that had an injunction mm -hmm. against them and and everything. And as if it was a it was a it was a domestic violence was at the root. They it's like they didn't get what triggered the domestic violence. The trick, yes. you know, the, what triggered it was standing in the way of my ability to have a relationship with my child. And Absolutely. when they have no recourse from, you know, they're got, not getting satisfaction in the courts, they get in, they spend all their money in attorney's fees and they're not getting satisfaction um, in, and years go by. Don't you think that it, it makes sense that some people would just like, they break and they would resort to violence not that it's justified, but they just don't know what to do because the system is failing for them. Yes, you come to your wit's end with it. And when the courts begin to see this type of high conflict case emerging in a divorce or even just a, a, like a separation where there hasn't been a marriage, but the court begins to witness this pattern of, okay, now somebody's going to get an injunction against them. Now, like there's several stepping stones that, that are very visible uh, that should be red flags to say, you know what, maybe you could benefit from this extended course over here. Let's try this before we jump straight into a huge monetary commitment. Let's see if this would actually help you transition because clearly people get stuck in the anger and uh, anger phase of the grieving process and then we uh, it escalates from there when there isn't any intervention at all it's crazy you're right about the, the cost of everything forgetting to get a psyche eval it is thou tens of thousands of dollars that that a lot of times people don't have so they get they get outspent uh, and, and are unable to have a relationship with their child because they just don't have the financial resources, not because of any psychological uh, situation. And it's, um, anyway, well, okay, so I wanted to find out, as far as building bridges, what, where can a person take your class? Is it a, is it a live or is it, on, or is it a self-directed class? Uh, can both parents take it? So, um, um, so tell us about how somebody can can uh, sign up for the class. Well, actually, you can put my website up with this um, talk. It's www.buildingbridgessolutions.org, and in that our, at that website, you can click on the schedule um, of classes and you can connect that way it gives you the opportunity to sign up for session one two three or four depending on whatever session you have to take next and they go in consecutive weeks so the other beautiful thing about breaking it into four parts is a you don't get overwhelmed with so much information but b is so much easier to deal with financially because you pay for it Per time that you take it rather than just a huge chunk up front so that also helps people that are managing through um, the financial hardship of a divorce or a split but um, yes I do it all via live webinar basically like you and I are talking right now I do it for that the very reason that um, sometimes in high conflict cases it's not good to have both parents in the same physical location so because of some of the studies that I've been looking at and some of the things you just mentioned, I felt like it was, would be better to do it from the comfort of their home or office, wherever they felt the safest and, you know, could sit and easily uh, pay attention without the fear of having to physically encounter their co-parent. So many times that is, uh, the one thing that co-parents that keeps them from going and getting help is the fact that they might have to be in the same place at the same time and this is just a safety for everyone and it's also very convenient people seem to really be responding well to it i think that's wonderful i really do because um you know 
a lot of times there there are programs out there that you can find on the internet internet self-directed but but really in dealing with this situation and dealing with people's pers you know individual situations it's important mm -hmm. to to have some live interaction and even conversations with the other participants listening to what they're going through can can make a difference and that can only be handled with a live version of a class whether you're in a classroom or you're in this this platform and you're absolutely right doing it on a webinar allows you to already be in your comfort zone because you're in your your own personal space participating I think that's yeah. great. I don't know of any. I don't know of any other uh, programs like this that are being done via live webinar where there's you know interaction both ways. No, I uh, I haven't been able to find any. This is the first of its kind, and I'm very proud to have it. Um, and I'm I'm glad that we have this technology now because really, if you think about just yourself when you were going through your divorce. Did you want to have to physically encounter your co-parent when all of this was happening? What did it do to you emotionally and, and all of that when you were having to deal with that? And you're an expert. You're like somebody that's seasoned. So imagine people that are going through this and they're completely overwhelmed and they feel so victimized by, by the system, by how things just aren't working out and where do they turn next? Well, they certainly don't want to turn to a place that's going to put them in the same physical location as their co-parent right now. <laughs> that's, that's something they just don't want to deal with. And I get it. So, and I don't blame them. I really don't. So, yeah. co-parent uh, well, is, is hard. <laughs> hard as, as hard as it can get. That is so true. It's so true. It's like of all the things that are the most important things in your life, uh, when you become a parent, that is, you know, you would die for them. You would do anything for them. And to the, sometimes you don't even, uh, a person who's well-meaning may turn to targeting the parent and they don't even know until somebody gives them a wake-up call in, in, in this program. That happens all the time, all the time too, with, um, with professionals like teachers and schools and youth directors and all of this. They're trying to be well-meaning, but one parent's getting favored over the other. And, and uh, I don't know, Danica, I think that this problem is so massive um, that sometimes you feel really inadequate dealing with it. But I know that the people that I have been able to help, um, it changed their lives and it definitely made a huge impact more importantly at least in my view uh, made a huge impact on their children's lives because you know now their children have the freedom to love both of their parents maybe begrudgingly at first but at least it's there now at least there's the opportunity whereas the opportunity didn't exist before the class so take it for what it is, but I think that it's one of the few options out there that actually is working on making a difference every single time with every single person. Nobody's slipping through the cracks, at least not now, at least not this time. Well, I've seen, I've seen what you're capable of. I've seen the, the gift that you've been given the call, in the calling uh, for this. You, there's definitely something that you have that other people need. I've seen it personally because I've seen you teach live classes in a classroom setting. And after, after four hours of the class, they're, you know, they're giving you hugs and thank yous and they're crying with gratitude. <laughs> I love my job. That's why. And I love the people. Um, I guess there's just a part of, of me that will always connect to that because I think, you know, I grew up as an alienated child from my dad. So I have that to work with as far as like that's in my tool shed. So I can relate in a lot of ways to maybe what their children are going through, but then take it to the next step. I've also been married and divorced with two kids and have gone through alienation as well. Um, and the thing about it is you don't know what you don't know 
unless you've actually gone through it, it's really hard for you to even speak to someone that's in the midst of this. What, why should they listen to you? So I think that everyone that I work with anyways knows how genuinely concerned and how much I truly want to help them through this for the sake of their kids. Absolutely. All right. I guess that's all the time we have. Um, Thank you for having me again. I appreciate it so much. Well, it's always a pleasure. I always, uh, I miss spending time with you. We need to do something. We need to get together more often, but, um, <laughs> All right. I will. I am signing off. Thank you guys for joining Custody Matters Live and we'll see you in, again next week. Yes, you will. Bye.